All right, in this video, we're going to show you how to set up your Wacom tablet. Now, I never knew it was Wacom. I always thought it was Wacom. Uh, it sounded the most natural, but it turns out it's a Japanese word. It's Wacom. But, hey, if it sounds silly, you can call it whatever you want. But I love my Wacom tablet. This is an Intuos 3, which is a professional-grade tablet, and it's good for a lot of reasons. One, it's got a lot of pressure sensitivity levels. It's got a pen that's got a nice soft grip on it. It detects the tilt on the brush, so that's pretty good too. And you can pick up one on eBay for about 40 bucks. So anyway, when you have your Wacom tablet, you can install the drivers. Now, the drivers on my computer are slightly different than the ones at school, but you can access them the same way. You go to Start, all programs scroll all the way down to the bottom and find Wacom tablet and Wacom tablet properties. So when you're in the tablet, uh, the first thing you need to do is set up your pen. Now if you're using the pen, it's going to default to showing you the pen. If you're using your mouse, it's going to highlight the mouse. Okay. Now in our case, we're using the grip pen and you want to have the tip feel set to firm. This allows for a softer touch, a lighter touch with your brush. Okay, You'll notice that the rocker switch here in your pen, the bottom is a right click and the top the towards the end of the pen is the double click because sometimes tapping is pretty difficult to do. You can go over to the eraser and it can have a soft and firm feel as well. I tend to leave mine right where it is. And then under mapping. Mapping is where we set this up for situations where we have multiple monitors or if you're a lefty. If you're a left-handed person, you might have, like I do, uh, a tablet that has buttons on the left but no buttons on the right. If that's the case, you'd want to move those function keys, those express keys, on the opposite side. Now let me show you how that works. So this is just for lefties. You go to orientation, express keys, and you say express keys right, and it'll flip the tablet which means that now up is down and down is up and left and right are swapped. And that way uh, you can turn the pen upside down and have your hand, your right hand next to these buttons and your left hand won't hit any buttons. I'm going to go ahead and switch mine back to uh, the express keys left so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, you can also uh, choose to have it only go on a particular monitor. If you have multiple monitors, you can you can tell it to only go on monitor one or two versus um, across two monitors. That's important because what will happen is you know this is a you know a rectangle and it's not as wide as two monitors next to each other. So if you had two monitors, you know the left side would be aligned to monitor one's left side, but then the right side would go all the way to the second monitor's edge. So I tend to put my tablet onto one monitor. So if you're in a situation where you have two monitors, you can choose one monitor. I only have one monitor on this computer right now, so it's uh, already set up correctly. So uh, if you are running an older version of the Wacom drivers, which we are at school, it will say landscape flipped here instead of express keys. So you would just choose landscape flipped, okay? and that will set up your pen. Next I want to show you the functions. Now over here in the functions these are the buttons and what they do. Right now you can see that the big tall button is the control key. It's just like holding down the control button on the keyboard. Uh, shift all right, is this one here and alt is the one with the little divot. Uh, I always call it a divot. I don't know what you'd call it but I think of golf and when they swing it and cuts a hole in the earth. And then the bottom here is kind of like holding down space bar in Photoshop. Uh, it'll do pan and scrolling, um, but it's not considered space bar. I tend to leave those like they are, although you can set these up as customized. So you can make it do all sorts of things like show the desktop or do a pop-up menu or an individual keystroke. Okay. I had a student who was having problems and had to undo a lot. And he actually programmed in Control Alt Z to step backward to where he could just tap it and it would undo what he did. So here's the touch strip. The touch strip allows you to scroll up and down 
or zoom in and out in Photoshop. Now you can adjust it to do different things as well, but in my case, I leave it as it is. And there's a pop-up menu. I'm not going to worry about that right now. That's not something we need to worry about. Now there is no save button. As soon as you just click X on this, it's saved those settings. So what we're going to do in the next video is show you what some of those settings have done to our pen's performance.